Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, devotional time. I don't know how you have devotional. Maybe you're journaling. Maybe you are just pondering on scripture, meditating on scripture. Remember, meditating on scripture is different in the Christian culture than what it is in a worldly culture. We meditate to fill ourselves, to fill ourselves with the word, to meditate on the word of God. We don't meditate to empty ourselves. So as you meditate this morning, I want us to meditate on Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16. It's a well-known scripture, being the salt and the light. Verse 13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, I want us to think a bit about salt and light. And these are household products and that's visible for you in every single house. Every house has salt and every house hopefully has some, some form of light. Let's first look at salt. And I just want to highlight two things around salt. In, old, uh, in, in, the, um, uh, in, in the Bible, when they talk about salt, they would think about it um, as flavor or as something that preserves corruption. Remember, they didn't have fridges or freezers or anything like that. So salt was, was widely used to keep food from corrupting. So if we think of those two things, flavor, if Jesus says, we should be the salt of the earth. We should be the flavor. We are to provide flavor in the world. I wonder in your front line, what kind of flavor do you bring to your office? What kind of flavor do you bring to your house? Are you that mom and dad that's always in a bad mood? that nobody can approach? What kind of flavor do you bring? Think about that for a moment. And if you want to, you can stop and just journal a little bit. God, what kind of flavor am I bringing in my front line? That flavor is often reflected on as, um, as wisdom. Do I really bring wisdom into this world? Do I really um, bring good wisdom into this world? That salt that I bring into this world, is it a flavor that makes something better? And then salt preserves, uh, prevents corruption. I wonder as you reflect on your front line. Can you identify where there is corruption? Where there is a corrupt heart? A lying, deceitful heart? A miserable, depressed, always in a bad mood kind of heart? I wonder what difference you can make in that place. I want you to think about that a little bit. Ask yourself, how can I bring flavor into my front line, into my family, into my workplace? Where is there corruption? And where can I make a difference? If you can't think of anything, pray about it and say, God, come and speak to me. He might highlight something that is just a little seed but if that seed grows, that corrupt seed grows, it will become a huge tree that will just 
um, cause devastation. So think about that for a moment. Colossians 4 verse 6 says, Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each other. Isn't that incredible when it talks about speech? And often our words can cut like a knife. I want you to think about it for your own life and how you speak to people. Is that salt? Does it bring wisdom? Does it bring flavor? Does it prevent corruption? And then um, we look at verse 14 that says, you are the light of the world. Light symbolizes new hope. Mark 4 verse 16 says, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light and for those dwelling in the region and shadows of death, on them a light has dawned. Here he's referring to Jesus. See, we are the image bearers of Jesus, of God. The more our hearts are transformed, the more um, the fruit of our heart produces good and positive culture, the more we bring hope into a situations. See, Christians should make the world a better place. You should make your front line a better place. You should symbolize hope like Jesus did. The second thing I want to say about light is where there is light, people can find their way. Philippians 2 verse 15 says that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Wherever you go, you can't hide. You are the light of the world. So what I want you to think about your front line. Just take a moment, and if you journal, journal this. Lord, where can I bring hope? Where can I um, shine brightly so that people can find their way? Ask God where there is darkness in your front line. I want us to close our eyes right now. Just think about it. Lord, where, where can I be salt? Where can I be light? Maybe you are at a place where it's hard for you. You feel fatigued. And it's hard to shine your light. Then it is time that you draw closer to God and say, God, come and change my heart. Come and transform my heart so that I can shine brightly. Maybe your saltiness is not so salty anymore. Just come before God and say, Lord, come and restore my heart. Help me to produce wisdom. Help me to produce good fruit. Lord, we want to glorify your name. We want to worship you. We want to be salt and life, light. We want this world to be a better place because we are in it, mirroring who God is. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week.